Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to introduce you to a new sponsor. Well, new to you, not to me. Zycam Nasal All Clear. Listen, this keeps your nose clean, clear, and healthy as part of your daily routine, and it's different because it's easy to use and it's convenient for on the go. Look, we've all dealt with this, but Zycam, this nasal all clear, the swabs, they deliver the triple acting benefit of protecting, cleansing, and soothing your nasal passages. Al, we all need to soothe our nasal passages. This is a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula, and uh, I like to say I swab it out in the morning. Just swab it out. Just swab it out. Look, it literally allows you to swab it out. I wake up with the dryness due to congestion and Zycam's nasal all clear. Just swabs it right out. Just swabs it out. And and like I said, easy to use, convenient for on the go. It's a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula. And you can swab it out with Zycam's nasal all clear. It's available on Amazon. Search for Zycam nasal all clear. That's A L L. C L E A R. Hi, this is Eric Dixon, NFL Hall of Famer, and you listen to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers with you. Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, turning the dials, pulling the levers. Beep, pop, boop. That was one of them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, December 21st. It's Christmas week. Merry Christmas to Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Who swooped himself into the oh. League of Record Championship game. Oh, fellas. Yeah, baby. Keenan Allen could not stop me. No, he couldn't stop Tony Pollard. Oh, oh Merry Christmas. You got a special present under the tree. You were not. Uh, you were a very good boy this year. That was a <laughs> Christmas miracle. You were able to pivot from Jeff Wilson. Yeah, who was fine? To... The number one running back on the week, I, Tony Pollard. Uh, I, I was watching the games uh, with my son, and I had stepped away from the television. Actually, I don't know. I, I was grabbing uh, uh, water, and my son screams, Tony Pollard touchdown. And I was like, don't. What? I was like, really? And then he goes, a 40-yard touchdown. Yeah. Oh, my. oh, man. I just started. Mm. I just started Did dancing, some dancing, doing some high kicks. Yes. I'm 50. <laughs> oh, and Andy, congratulations to you as well. Oh, well, you we'll are, see. Well, I'm just saying congratulations. You thought you were out, O-U-T. Yeah. And you are playing for the championship tonight. You need 11.2 points from Deontay Johnson. 11.3. Oh. 11.2 for a tie. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. 11.3 and a half PPR. Yeah. And Whew. you're in the championship. Let's hope he doesn't drop the ball for me and for I can make it into the title. Literally. Game. Um, but I mean, we've been, we've been on Twitter. We've been listening to the foot clan and all of their stories. Congrats to many of you. And if you didn't make it through, congrats on getting this far. It's not mm -hmm. easy to do. No. Um, and only one team wins each and every year. That is the, that is the hard <laughs> part. That's the hard thing to wrestle with is like, a, you know, your average 12 team league, 11 out of 12, yeah. 11 twelfths. We'll lose, and that sucks. My my wife got to endure more fantasy tilt this week than she's ever experienced. I've been yeah, able yeah, I've yeah. been able to compar uh, compartmentalize most of it, but the right, fact you're no Jason. Well, just <laughs> the fact that yeah, the, the Keenan Allen was it was a island game, so I'm at home watching the game and experiencing that in real time, and I I couldn't hold those emotions back. <laughs> So the wife got to experience where I conceded my loss. Sure. And then she actually kept checking in, like, you know, how's it going? Like, Wellness checks. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. well, I might actually win. And she, she brings up uh, how different it, it used to be just all I cared about was the Arizona Cardinals. Sure. You know, that everything was, well, they, did they win or did they lose? I'm just like, and now you got all these players and everything. I'm like, I'm like yes. There are so many more different ways to be disappointed right. now. 
<laughs> yes, they, it's a good point. I, I remember the same thing. Before we did the podcast, the Cardinals' success yes. would change my Sunday mood. Mm-hmm. And uh, now a lot of it really comes down to we, we want to be right on our projections, too, and the players yes. that we're talking about starts of the week, things like that. Jason and I had some moments in the studio. Mike wasn't in the studio yesterday. We had some moments where our players from League of Record were having success oh. on the field, and we just – we're both out of the playoffs. We're out like, of the playoffs. In the oh, AJ Brown. T- oh, that it's irrelevant. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter anymore. Yeah. So sad. All right, let's get some Monday Punday reactions to the weekend. Mm, yes. Let's start off with the number one reply that we got. Jalen oh. hurt so good. Oh, hurt mm. so good. Uh, how about those Los Angeles shams? Oh yes, uh, scam makers. Cam mm. flakers. Cam Faker. Oh, no. Cam Fakers. But, but Marwin Jones Jr. <laughs> Sabi Anderson. Oh, Mr. Limited. <laughs> David Mopper Tuna. Wee! Oh, Payne Gallman. Jared Puke. Lump <laughs> of Coal Comet. Oh, yes, and uh, along came Pollard. Okay, I like that. Uh, Leonard Scornet. <laughs> And uh, DK Metcalf. Yes. Aww. Yes. Uh, my my personal edition was Money Pollard. Very nice. Uh, not really though. That was, no, that's that, not, that was pretty terrible. Uh, you know what was not terrible? <laughs> Playing Tony Pollard. My son kept calling him Leonard Fournette. Oh. Yeah. Which I think is a, an improvement because he feels more like a Leonard. You know, it's like uh, it, 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 that that game was so frustrating to me. Tom Brady's my start of the week, and he, he had bought, a great week. He, oh, yeah, three ninety and and two touchdowns. Yeah, but he had two more that went down at the one yard line, and then Leonard Fournette can he, he was able to get the one yard. It was like no. I believe the quote on this show when we were talking about playing Leonard Fournette was, "Well, he like he's on. It's a good matchup." He could fall into two touchdowns. And, yeah. And he legitimately fell into two touchdowns. He went out after the game with Adrian Peterson and they had a few drinks and celebrated. <laughs> this is it's exactly what Peterson did for yes. two straight weeks, fell into two touchdowns. But that's how it works. Jason wished Tom Brady could have been the number one overall in the week, because if he had gotten those other two, he would have been. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Join the foot.com is the community of uh, thousands of Foot Clan members, supporters, and champions of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. When you talk about Mr. Irresponsible, Drew Locke, <laughs> you can't help but talk about Mr. Irresponsible, Deontay Johnson. Sure. And and that is a terrifying place to be to rely on somebody who is now known for dropping the football. Uh, you're good. We're good vibes. Yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited. I told my son, which I I know Mike, you're in this boat too. With, yes. With your son being in our family league, uh, on the cusp of the championship, being able to share that with our boys this year has been so much fun. I I revealed, you know, my son went to bed. That's the funny part. They go to bed before these games end sometimes. Mm-hmm. So he wakes up, and I tell him that, you know, Nick Chubb didn't have an outlandish game. Wayne Gallman struggled, and he couldn't have been more excited about the potential for a title, and I know your son's excited. Yes. It's fun to make it a family. Go Juju. Event. <laughs> it's better that the whole family can be um, excited or depressed together, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the key. All right. Michael Thomas didn't play. Now he's on injured reserve. Yep. They're getting him ready for the playoffs, which – is not good news for fantasy football playoffs. Is he the most disappointing bust of the season now, Michael Thomas? I I think he is without a doubt the 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 biggest bust. I mean, you you have the the injuries at the top, which I I never really consider those busts. Obviously, if you pick Saquon Barkley, it was a huge bust. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is more of a bust because <clears throat> you held on to him the whole year and he missed so much. But you had three games where you played him. He was in your lineup and he was awesome. Michael Thomas has had games where he's been in people's lineup, and he's stunk in every single one of them. He's been all right a couple times. No, oh, he's he is he has. He's has he to- even had he's a touchdown a- this year? No. Yeah. No. If that's your bar, then no, he hasn't had you, a touchdown. You drafted him to not be okay. I would you say drafted he- him to be the number one wide receiver, and he's 
he's been irrelevant. I think it's a compelling case that he's the biggest bust. I know injury derailed him, and obviously it, it persisted through the games he was active. He was active six times. His highest but, finish was 16 overall. He, he had three games outside the top 48 in that stretch where you probably were tempted to play him. He also had other injuries he was dealing with. He went from a Hall of Fame, uh, the most accurate quarterback of all time, to Taysom Hill. So I like a I'm lost not, season. I'm not though. blaming yes. Michael Thomas. I'm not saying Michael Thomas sure. is not a good wide receiver or he's bad. I'm just saying for fantasy purposes. I mean, what you just illustrated, Andy. He he, he was six games active, never once a wide receiver one or top fifteen on the week. Uh, yeah, I I would. I mean. We're supposed to be talking about the news, but we're talking about this. I would put my vote to Christian McCaffrey, not because I blame him for the injury, but just in fantasy football terms, people were actively trading for Christian McCaffrey for the finish, betting on him coming back for yes. For, well, let me for, ask you this: the playoffs uh, and like people traded really high value running backs to upgrade perceptually upgrade to Christian McCaffrey for the playoffs. Is there any chance Christian McCaffrey wins people championships next week? Yes. And redeems himself. There is a chance. Okay, cool. I might, but, uh, I might have him on my bench. I, I, I will say this. <laughs> as someone who uh, got to the playoffs uh, through Counted the, on him. And was counting on him, I did not make it to the championship without him. So, All right, here, here's some interesting news. Stephon Diggs left the game late against the Broncos. Foot injury. NFL Network's Kim Jones reporting that it's not believed to be serious. I, I, I'm going to be honest. That game was so out of reach. And I had Josh Allen in, in my Dynasty League, and I wanted him to keep playing. But I was shocked he was still in the game, and I was shocked to see Stephon Diggs still in the game, and I was shocked to see Tredavious White, who went down hurt, still in the game. It was one of those cases where you almost – you looked out on the field, and you're like, man, this game is gone. What, right. I want him out there, but what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're, if you're a Bills fan – you yeah. certainly wanted them not playing football. And and while this is, you know, not believed to be serious, you have to monitor this. this I, I think this could be a big deal because wasn't he carted? Yeah, that well, th that's where it looked bad because he was carted off, but he did come back to the sideline, if I remember correctly. And they're saying it's not serious, but you got to monitor it. James Robinson got hurt, ankle injury in week 15. Looked very serious initially. Um, didn't make it back out on the field. Could miss next week. We don't know. Right. And uh, it would be Daria Gumbawale that probably gets most of the work. Not all of the work. Azigbo would be there too. But that could be a situation to monitor against the Bears. Clyde Edwards-Alaire didn't return. Mm. Suffered a leg and hip injury in the fourth. Yeah, it looked rough. He went down. I mean, almost like, I can't like, stretch that way. Yeah, I mean, you, he got forced down into the splits. Uh, they're saying it is a hip injury. I would not expect him to play over the final two weeks, which means I had a bet. With a friend on Twitter, Chris, uh, $100 will be going to Fantasy Cares because Clyde Edwards will not finish in the top 12. It was close, though, right? It was. But yeah, it also that, means Lev Bell is going to be... Well, Lev Bell also went down. We don't have an... I don't know if we have an update on... He came back in. Did he? He did. Okay. Yeah, he came back in. He I scored a touchdown that. after that, I believe. No, no, no. The touchdown was before it. Oh, he went down twice then? Yeah. Like, when they were run, when they were just milking out the clock, he essentially got face mask slammed oh, okay. into the ground. Because he had left earlier in the game, too. Right. So, all right. Yeah, we'll monitor the running back situation there. Who knows? Daryl Williams could be relevant. Yes. James Robinson talked about it. Mo Raheem Mostert, ankle injury. Um, just brutal, This man. is just a part of every game he plays now. I, he looked great. I mean, he was uh, the primary ball carrier. Uh, he had a ton more carries than Jeff Wilson to through the first two quarters and then got hurt starting the, the second half. The 49ers have a type. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, Yep. He's not my type or whatever. Like the 49ers are really intrigued by super athletic people that are made of peanut brittle. They they have to burn a little too bright. Yeah. I feel like it's a chicken egg thing. Like, do you come to San Francisco to get hurt or are you already injury prone and they like you because of that? Yeah. They I buy mean, the dip. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Wilson went down. <laughs> Coleman's just barely come back, but that's another thing to watch. Tevin Coleman could get some play. Nick Mullins came out due to an elbow injury in that game. Stay safe, Ayuk. Stay safe. Yeah. Uh, wow. Michael Gallup forced from the game. Traquan Smith forced from the game. And Jamal Williams exited the first half with a quad injury. James Conner questionable for tonight's game. Um, I, I heard you on Sunday Live. Nice job, by the way, Jason. Thank you. I know you battled through an eyelash in one of your eyes. It was, you know, the heart of a lion is what I showed on Sunday mm -hmm. Live with that eyelash problem. 
Yeah. I mean, you could only see the questions with one eye. That's right. Impressive. You did mention, look, you just got to find a different option than James Conner. Hopefully you're not leaning on James Conner tonight. Yeah, I mean, at this point, your your roster decisions have been made. If you've got James Conner in your lineup, best of luck to you. I would have been worried to do that myself. Would you play him over every option on Cincinnati? Yes. Okay. If he's active. Right. Yeah. That's still a question. Was it Traymon Williams? Or... um uh. Now you now you infected me <laughs> with the name Trevion Tre yeah. Travion Williams yes yeah um any any other news Brooksy anything you got us to get in uh, need to get into got nothing oh he's got nothing hmm. not surprised but gold bars not surprised at all before we move into this week's stud muffins want to thank today's sponsor Foot Clan did you know that Audible is the leading creator and provider of premium audio storytelling from bestsellers and new releases to exclusive Audible originals and podcasts, including exclusive series. It's the number one place uh, people go to for audiobooks. I have experienced many an uh, audiobook on my travels. It's uh, my favorite way to read. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not joking. I just had a friend tell me he read, read six books on Audible this past week. That's a lot of reading. So good. You I was like, man, you're well read. You are. And look, you can now find and follow this podcast, the Fantasy Footballers on Audible, along with hundreds of other of, of thousands of other podcasts on the Audible app for free. No membership, no credit card needed. Uh, you find them in one place. I mean, you, you get your audiobooks one place. You get your podcasts in one place. And you can go to audible.com slash pods or text the word pods to 500-500 to download the Audible app and follow us there. Also, speaking of Amazon, are you guys Prime members? You're of darn right. Of course you are. Well, this holiday weekend, Amazon Prime Video is the place to watch the NFL Live with back-to-back -back games. On Friday, which, spoiler alert, is Christmas, mm. the Vikings are taking on the Saints in an NFL Christmas special. And then on Saturday, the 49ers face our Arizona Cardinals in a divisional showdown only on Prime Video. Are you not an Amazon Prime member? Don't worry. You could sign up for a free 30-day trial, and you'll get both games. You can catch all the action on any device almost anywhere in the world. So this holiday weekend, relax, tune in, enjoy NFL on Prime Video. Again, reminder, Friday, Viking Saints, Saturday, 49ers Cardinals. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern for both games. Kickoff at 4.30, both on Prime Video. Friday's game is also available on the NFL Network and Fox. Uh, simulcasts are subject to change, presented by Blood, Bud Light Platinum, also available on mobile and in select markets. <laughs> this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. That's, that's for vampires who are on a diet. <laughs> Presented <laughs> by blood. blood Light. David Blau loves Blood Light. Oh. Yeah. That's the blood of skinny people. If otherwise, full full blood is just draining a fatty over there. Oh, is this whole? I'm watching my figure. Whole skin. Please pass the blood light. Blah blah blah. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days, oh, man. man. Oh, I hope you know what I. <laughs> oh, that was special. Um, Mike, are you excited that you know Christmas can come down to what it's really about? Uh, your fantasy championship. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am so excited for ChristmasFootball.com. Can't wait. All right, that's good. Uh, <laughs> wait, is that a thing? <laughs> All right, is that a thing? He says like a you dummy. Didn't know, you didn't know ChristmasFootball.com. You never I been there? I mean, I just checked it out. It's an incredible website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Domains available for sale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on from Bloodlight right. to <laughs> this week's fantasy stud muffins. Uh, Jalen Hurts, oh, whole, whole brother, twenty four for forty four, three thirty eight and three, had a rushing touchdown. Was Mike's start of the week, and he was. Great for and 63 fantasy. 63 rushing yards in addition. I mean, the, the number one quarterback, he looks great. Oh. oh. It yeah. hurts so good. Yeah, that is, that is the best kind of hurt. I mean, it, this is this is someone that, uh, I mean, 
goodness gracious, you're you're going to win championships because of Jalen Hurts if you picked him up and are streaming him in these. Well, let me let me bring one up. All right, there's going to be a lot of decisions. We'll talk about it all week. But the first one, Josh Allen, right off of this monstrous game, gets New England next week. Jalen Hurts has Dallas. Oh man, how do you go, Josh Allen over Jalen Hurts next week? And how do you not? How do you do either one? Yeah. Oh. Um, I, mean, I don't know if I don't think he's available in our league, but in my head, because I've uh, I traded for Lamar Jackson for the playoff run, uh, and in back when I traded for him, part of that lineup was you know the Giants, and the Giants was not looking like a scary matchup, but their defense has really gotten it together. And, and I was thinking, would I have the stones to go Jalen Hurts against Dallas? Instead of Lamar Jackson, I don't. Again, I don't know if I can make that decision, but people are going to be thinking about that too. Yeah, people, yeah. people are going to be thinking about everybody oh, versus Jalen Hurts. It's going to be intense. The one thing I would say is I wouldn't expect as good a game as he had against Arizona. In the sense sure. that I mean, Kyler yeah, 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 threw yeah. for 400 yards, good had a, an incredible game himself. It was back and forth throughout. Exactly, and and the Cardinals' offense was able to score on the Eagles' defense. A divisional matchup with Andy Dalton. I don't think you're going to have the same high-scoring affair, but I do think he's awesome and a good play this next week. Well, maybe maybe Tony Pollard can uh, reprise his role as the number one running back and keep maybe. the game close. Josh Allen, Oof. 28 for 40, 359 and two. Um, man, I love this. I love his ascension. He people starting to talk about the MVP situation. For Josh Allen? Maybe, maybe. Um, I don't understand how you could theoretically put him ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Ooh, excellent. But Mahomes will have that whole – like Mahomes and Rodgers are going to always have that, well, we're used to you being great. Sure. And it's the – you know, like Russell Wilson's probably fallen out of that race. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. He's he's definitely out of MVP. I mean, he's, he's great. He's having an excellent season. The, the, the ascension you're talking about of like – of Josh Allen going from – Literally the the most inaccurate passer in football to one of the most accurate. I mean that is a transformation that you you do not see that happen. You and I I think unfortunately for the NFL you're going to see a lot of NFL teams fall into this trap of mm -hmm. we saw what Josh Allen did. I, we can fix guys now. I started writing a tweet <laughs> this weekend and I'm not joking. It was. Josh Allen is why Mitch Trubisky gets drafted. Josh Allen is why John Skelton gets drafted. It's why Logan Thomas He's got why yes. Lo Logan Thomas was drafted as a quarterback, not as a tight end, by uh -huh. the Arizona Cardinals because he could throw it over the mountains. Yes. Why? Well, just no accuracy. Josh Allen deserves all the credit in the world. Yes, the coaching he does. staff and team deserves all the credit in the world. Yes, they do. They, they made the right pick, and he could win you ball games before he was an accurate quarterback. Now. It's just entertaining to watch him on the field thread the needle and have the arm talent to just disintegrate defenses. I'm looking at him. He's finished number two at the position two out of the last three weeks. He's done it on the road in both of those times. Now he's on the road against New England. If he got you here, yeah, I'm playing. I think you're probably playing him. Ryan Tannehill was Whew. unbelievable. He had five total touchdowns in this game. Ridiculous. So uh, can Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill coexist? That's they yep. can't. They can't exist without each other. If your play action pass equals Corey Davis for seventy, because you're so afraid of stiff arm Henry. Oh, I mean, he claimed another body. <laughs> his stiff arms are great. Most stiff he arms. He claimed another soul. He did. Most stiff arms are the arm is straight. It's out. It's extending. It, it's trying to push you away. His is not like that. His he lets you get close enough where he can actually push you. He. He grabs, like, his elbow is bent at the start of when he's touching you, and then he throws you yes. like a rag doll. They are trying to hire him, actually, to dig graves at the <laughs> local cemetery because you don't need any equipment. You just throw it right in. <laughs> All right, Kyler Murray. Huge game for Kyler Murray. Yes. 406 passing yards, three touchdowns. I think what I was happy to see in this game was the Cardinals decided that that DeAndre Hopkins guy was relevant for something other than a slant route, and they threw him the ball deep yeah, a you couple love to of see times. It. And guess what? He caught it. For a I can't believe it. Yeah, incredible. Lamar Jackson, the resurgence. QB6, QB1, QB5 the last three weeks. Um, Man, my I know one of the 
things that Mike did in our league of record to get to the title game. He made two moves around the trade deadline. He picked up Lamar Jackson just in case he has a resurgence. And he picked up Calvin Ridley. And um, <clears throat> so far, so good. Yes. Justin Herbert, we had the Thursday night game. Matt Ryan, uh-oh, our Rulio's made what? to be broken. <laughs> I mean, this was this was unbelievable. He 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 looked great for the first time without Julio. Very well, it's very till the, till the end of the game. That's fair, but I mean, it was it was very surprising. You had uh, Hayden Hurst with a good game, Russell Gage with a good game. Very not what we have seen without Julio out there. Yeah, people were really flexing against us on this one too. That Matt Ryan's Rulio eleven doesn't come true this week. We've had more games where where it's gone sideways than, uh, you know, it was fun. Drew Locke has a good game every once in a while, people. If you want to trust Matt Ryan. Without Julio. Without Julio, that's that's your business. Yes. You make the decisions. <laughs> and Mahomes was really good. Oh, uh, yeah, that guy. All right, running backs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. David Montgomery. This one was outstanding. 32 for 146 and 32. two. 32. I believe now, I saw. Go ahead, Jason. We, Andy and I were having a, a debate in the mm -hmm. studio. Okay. I was weeping in the corner because he's my running back, and I got eliminated by Mike last week, and I would have won going away this week. Yes, you would have. Um, so we were debating because the way that I look at David Montgomery, I, I don't want to. I don't want to sway. I don't want to sway your opinion by saying what our debate was. So I'm just going to ask you the question. How do you look at David Montgomery this year? Like zero to ten, how happy are you with David Montgomery? Ooh, a zero to ten, I would say. And how happy do you think people are about David Montgomery? Uh, the I don't. I, I'll speak for myself. I can't speak for the people. I am a man of the people, so it, it, maybe I will. But your happiness scale with David Montgomery, I think, is off the charts. I would say at least a nine for my personal happiness with David Montgomery. But bit factored into that was you go. We got to go all the way back to when uh, my groin, when when David Montgomery went down in training camp with what was talked about. They were, there was whispers. It was a non-contact injury. David Montgomery may have gone down for the season, and it turned out it was just a really bad groin injury, and his ADP plummeted. When you so people who drafted David Montgomery, I mean, he was a seventh or eighth round draft pick, and that turning into a a top ten running back, you should be ecstatic with that. Yeah, that that's how I view. I think he's he's a and he's, he's a ten. He, he has looked great. He got off to a slow start in the beginning of the year. Two of his first three games were outside the top thirty six running backs, and so you you were disappointed. And a lot of times that factors in. But, oh, my goodness gracious, he has just been on fire, unstoppable. He's the running back six on the season right now, and I, I, I think people are, are outlandishly excited. Well, Jason was bringing up that he was close to being a my guy. Like, he was on the board, yeah. he was on the board was, as a my you, guy. Yeah. For, for, he was going to be an Andy my guy until he went down with the injury. Then the groin injury happened, and um, courtesy of Matthew Berry, First running back with four straight games of 24.5 fantasy points this season. So four straight weeks. If you paced out his last four games, he's on 284 for 17, 36, and 20. <laughs> and we said four weeks ago, what if he starts scoring? Because that's been the thing. David Montgomery has always been kind of stuck behind the battle line. Mm -hmm. The word to describe him through before these four games was unspectacular. Right. Was he consistent? Sure. But what he was never you never got spectacular from David Montgomery, and now you did. And he might win you a league. He might, and uh, like uh, through those first ten weeks, he had one rushing touchdown. That's and now he's crazy. And now he has what five in the in the last three games. And you have to, you have to give a side hat mm -hmm. tip to Mitchell Trubisky. Absolutely, this offense is so much better with Mitchell Trubisky. It's, Thirty points in three clear. straight games. Thirty plus. All right, Tony Pollard. 12 carries, 69 yards, two touchdowns, nine targets for six, uh, for 63 through the air. Yep. Is he? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get like too crazy here. But is he the, better for the Dallas Cowboys offense than Ezekiel Elliott right now? The people are talking, Jason Brooks. Well, you're a, you're a Cowboys fan. Is he better for your? Is your offense better have, focusing on him versus Zeke? I mean, it sure looked like it, right? I think the answer is definitively no. I don't think it's definitive. I, I do. 
I watched Chase Edmonds do this for a couple of games in the middle of the season with Kenyon Drake's injury. Zeke wasn't 100%. He has no Dak. Like, to move the offense on a consistent fashion. Did Dak play yesterday? No. No, he didn't. Mm. Mm. I, I'm just saying, but I'm saying he fits into an offense with Dak better than he does trying to carry the load when the entire defense, sure, it, you know, he's not as good in the passing game, plain and simple. Tony Pollard's a better pass catcher, much like Chase Edmonds is a much better pass catcher than Kenyon Drake. That's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, you can take that definitively away if you want to, but I think that this is a very similar situation to what we've seen elsewhere in and I don't know. I mean, 12 for 69 on the ground is a good performance. And one of, one of those was a 40-yard uh, scant at the end of the game. The hard part for Tony Pollard is that Ezekiel Elliott is, what, a, a $90 million man? And so the Tony Pollard needs to get more touches when Zeke is playing. But you've committed $90 million to Ezekiel Elliott at the running back positions that – it puts you in a bit of a pickle. And this will be a this will be a huge monitor situation for championship week. I mean, will Zeke be back? Uh, they were they were saying they expected him to play this. This was a very last minute scratch. So I would, unfortunately, for Tony Pollard being on my team, I would unfortunately predict that Zeke will be back. All right. It almost feels like remember when David Johnson, the big contract in Arizona, and we saw some Chase Edmonds back behind yeah. David Johnson, Dalvin Cook is great 24 yep. for 132 and one Derrick Henry is great 24 for 147 and one those are both exactly what you expected and you're excited about that Aaron Jones 20 for 145 and one you're, you're actually not like Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry are so good that they're that these games where they just literally had 130 to 147 yards and touchdowns I think you're a little disappointed. Is well, I which could, is ins that's how good they are. I could tell you, uh, I played Dalvin Cook and watching him on a drive. Uh, I think they gave it to him like three straight times, and he didn't get in from the five. That was pretty disappointing. Yeah, and Derrick Henry not hitting 200 yards is now is now the expectation <laughs> against Detroit, right? Um, Melvin Gordon gets to play the revenge game next week. He was 11 for 61 and two. Yeah, I mean, we said play him this week, and it was it was fine. Yeah, you can play him, but this is, I mean, this is that's the Mike Davis line from two weeks ago, where it yeah it on on paper for fantasy it looks fantastic, but you take away those two touchdowns and it's just blind. Here was a huge game, Savan Ahmed. Dude. 23 for one, 22 and one. These Dolphins, man. I was shocked at this. We, we're we watching the games. We've got, you know, we're in the studio. We've got all the games up, watching the whole thing. And at one point, I I, I turned to Andy. I said, "Do you did you realize that Ahmed had 122 rushing yards? We were both blown away. Like, it, I guess, you know, he just, when you get the ball 23 times. Well, that was the story from Miles Gaskin before Ahmed, yeah. and it's working out. But that's huge. And we'll see who's active next week in the backfield. I would imagine it'll be Gaskin, but we'll see. All right. J.D. McKissick, 10 targets, 9 for 56 and 1. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, it was good to see. I was still pretty confident despite the Haskins problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I was not. I will take a big fat L on the McKissick, Logan Thomas. Yeah. Just my view of the Dwayne Haskins-led Washington football team was – I don't want any part. Goodness. It's, it's now did the you goal. you push that, Andy? I did. <laughs> it's now the goal to have the McKissick drop just take you by surprise. That's it has why to, I did it. It has to come in the most inappropriate time. Yeah, you were oh. making some good point over there. Oh, man. There it is. Pepper uh, needs new shorts. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, kudos to the Washington football team offense for being able to. They almost beat Seattle, man. Yeah. It, it, crazy world. 88% of snaps from McKissick was the story. He came out and was the first and second down running back to start the game, which really changed his outlook. They didn't lean on Peyton Barber, although Barber did vulture one touchdown. DeAndre Swift looked great. Jason, you brought this up. Rookie running back week, man. I mean, I, 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 Cam Akers got hurt, unfortunately. Yeah, he did. Um, if he hadn't got hurt, I think he would have had a, a obviously a better game. But you had Swift, you had uh, James Robinson, you had Jonathan Taylor, you had J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins. I mean, this is at the end of the season. These rookie running backs, poof, making their mark. Yeah, get them. 
Leonard Fournette, <laughs> 14 for 49 and two. Five targets. I Okay. If you're starting running back on a good offense, mm -hmm. that's all there is to it. Uh, Saturday game for Leonard, though. And we expect Ronald Jones back. Uh, yes. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, Josh Jacobs against the Los Angeles Chargers, 26 for seven, uh, 76 and one. We talked about that game. By the way, my reign is over for the uh, CBS Experts League uh. Uh, that I won last year. I was in the semifinal matchup. I got squashed like a bug. Yeah, I saw Jamie Eisenberg's team. <laughs> 209 points. They hit. <laughs> Every single player was incredible. Um, David Johnson. <laughs> 11 targets, 11 catches, 106 yards. This is kind of what we saw happening in Houston, like in the beginning, right? We said... They're missing weapons. Now Will Fuller's gone. You lost Hopkins. David Johnson was the guy. There was also no Duke Johnson. Correct. So I'm sure that factored into it. But uh, he wasn't great on the ground, but he, he was great through the air, and it, it helped. Because that's who David Johnson is now. Yeah, he, he's been good this year. It, it, you, I, th I, th I think people don't realize how Correct. consistent and valuable he's been because he's missed some games and had a few choice bad performances, but... I think David Johnson's reliable as a solid, solid RB2. I just remembered who we're going to talk about in the running back stinkers this week, and I can't wait because you oh. made it. You made a prediction about him this week. It had I... to do with your grandmother. All right. Oh. Uh, wider. <laughs> yeah, the best call I've ever made. Do you remember what I'm talking about, Mike? Uh, I, there was. I don't remember the player, but Jason said he would start his grandmother over them. Yes, and I, and who I... is deceased. <laughs> right, and I said that could be a – she could have scored more points. She would be a positive for your lineup. If you make that decision, oh, yeah. you will okay. score okay. more fantasy points. And you were right, and we'll get to it. Calvin Ridley, though, wide receiver studs. We're talking about Calvin Ridley. Happy birthday, Calvin Ridley. 10 for 163 and 1. It's all he does when there's he, no Julio. He is elite. He also had another touchdown that was just yeah. – did you see that, Mike? Yeah. Just tipped. Mm -hmm. Oh, you must have died. Yes, I did. DeAndre Hopkins, 11 targets, 9 for 169 and 1. Nice. Leads the NFL in receiving yards. Surpassed 100 catches for the fourth time in his career. Kind of a good player. Kind of going to keep starting him. Yep. Zach Pascal, what? <sighs> you rascal. Stealing all my T.Y. Hilton points. I believe I called him a rascal, too, did on you? Sunday. <laughs> I, I did. I did. Seven for or Five for I mean, 79 it, and 2. It almost rhymes. The, if you say his name... Pascal. It, yeah. yeah. It works. Pascal the rascal. The, yeah. the t oh, Zach. <laughs> that old rascal. The T.Y. tilt in the studio was Tilton. real yeah. because, you know, he was a, it was a start of the week. Yeah. Uh, Andy had him. You had him. We had him in our uh, sleeper bowl. I mean, literally, we needed him everywhere. And he actually came through. He, he, he did. He's not a, a bad player. Double play. digits in PPR. Yeah. I mean, he was fine by the end of the game. But that last bomb. Yeah. It was drag, it just dragged down on the three. Oh, it was, it was a bomb touchdown that wasn't a touchdown. We were jumping around, uh, but Zach Pascal he didn't exist to help your fantasy team. He existed to hurt it yes. this week, and yet we mention him as a stud. Oh, speaking of hurting, uh, Marvin Jones had twelve targets, ten receptions, hundred and twelve yards, a touchdown. And Andy, you had him uh, in the dynasty uh, league that you were trying to win, and and still. Did you start Marvin Jones? That's a that's a no. Oh, who did he start? And uh, I believe it was Robbie Anderson. Oh, and look, I, this is hindsight for sure. I w I would have done exactly what you did, Andy. I when they announced Matthew Stafford was active and likely going to play, like that was breaking news, right? They thought mm -hmm. he missed the game. I had the moment where I said, I, I I need to play Marvin Jones over Robbie Anderson, and then I had the moment, like every fantasy player does. This is what we relate to you. Okay, I made the wrong call. Now, the reason I made the wrong call is because I didn't want to mess with my team. I literally said, well, who got me to the semifinal game? Well, Robbie Anderson did. Is he he seems like he's guaranteed for a certain level of target share in this game. I, I brought up on the show I didn't like Jair Alexander matchup, but I also brought up like Jair sends to stay on mm -hmm. one side. They moved around Robbie Anderson around. I almost did it. I, did, I actually did it in the lineup, and then I moved it back out of fear. Well, at least Robbie Anderson didn't scream, don't sit me <laughs> to you. Yeah, yeah. This was tough, though. I mean, Marvin was elite this week. He, Ten for one twelve. I I was terrified. 
to play any of the – I mean, Swift is fine, but I, I didn't want to play Stafford. I didn't want to play Marvin Jones, but Stafford is just <sighs> an Iron Man. I'm hurting. Thanks for bringing that up. Savon Diggs is great, 11 for 147 this week. He's Leads- got to be in the running for best pick of the year. Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I mean, you got him in the middle rounds. He sure. was not expensive. And yeah, he's, I, the, he's the wide receiver four. He's been so doesn't consistent. Doesn't Mike owe him an apology? I took the L on Stephon Diggs weeks ago, my man. Did you? Yes. And my, my apology was is was never anything to do with Stephon Diggs. I'm just it trying was, to back him into it. The apology is is to Josh Allen. Yeah. Because Stephon Diggs is an elite wide receiver. Never it, said otherwise. No, and but we should we should connect the dots there though with Josh Allen. Like the reason, one of the reasons Josh Allen is making the jump. One of the biggest reasons is Stephon Diggs. I mean, correct. Your accuracy goes up when you throw to a player that is always open and makes spectacular catches on the reg. Correct. Corey Davis, another huge game, four for one, ten and one on a long bomb. Love. Uh, I'm I'm so happy for Corey Davis. Yeah, I feel like Corey Davis and Nelson Aguilar have combined this year to be the Devontae Parker of the season. It's That's like fair. you get you get overdrafted in the NFL by a team who they 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 make a slight overcalculation of what you could do. Like you, they they take you to be a one, so you're expected to be a number one. When he's just he's an excellent number two wide receiver. Yeah, and and the truth is, is he also had a quarterback problem. Sure. And that could have been yep. what Nelson Aguilar did, too. Yeah. Yep. All right, Robert Woods, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown finally hit on that bomb. We've been waiting for it. Yep. He hit on it. They take the shot every week, but this time a 46-yard touchdown. Brandon Ayuk. Oh, Ayuk! Nine for 73 and a touchdown. It kind of came along slowly in this game, but he's been incredible. He is – uh. His target share over the last five games is a pace of 202 targets. Man, what happens, though, championship week with if it's C.J. Beathard? Uh, I don't care. Yeah, yeah right. it's irrelevant. C.J. Okay. Beathard, I mean. Get the ball into Ayuk's hands. Let the rest happen. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And and the way that they manufacture touches for their wide receivers, I, I could care less. I do wonder if Kittle is. will be back next week, though. It's possible. And Beathard and Kittle, they've had some good times They're together. They're Beathard friends. <laughs> Oh, please, Mike. No, I like it. Oh, you like it? I was expecting this. Or this. Oh, no. I liked it. Yeah, you would. Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey. Huge weeks. Kelsey is so good. Yeah, very good. I, um, I'm um, i going to be keeping him in our keeper league, we just were, for the record. We were discussing. Yeah, where does he belong in the draft if you could draft this year? Yeah, if you're redoing the draft. This year, he's with a, the he's, knowledge. He's easily a first round. Right, pick. but where? Sure, where? But where? What spot? Because we were basically debating the is he, could he be the one on one for no, the advantage of the position? I think you take him probably third or fourth. That's so where, where I, does he belong next year? The the problem is with Travis Kelsey is is just his age, and I mean, he has been in he he has been an Iron Man. Like how many games has Travis Kelsey missed in the last? four or five years i don't think none? any i don't think any i, I, I believe it's none he, and he, he's now 31 or 32 this will be the fifth consecutive year he finishes number one at the position which is just absolutely unheard of and part of that is health <clears throat> and he's just if if you can get this again i think you can get this at least one more year then you take him let's pretend you probably can. fifth or let's something. pretend that know. you can get this for one more year considering you've gotten in for five consecutive years then I'm, I, if you can get this, I would be fine taking him at like the thir- third or fourth. I would still take. I think it's going to be fun to see. I still would take Dalvin Cook, uh, even uh, Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Derek Henry those, those type of guys. He's going to get pushed back in the first round for but, sure. But just knowing that the, the, the injury rate of a running back compared to what Travis Kelsey has been and compared to that, that positional advantage, you're getting a, you're getting a top 10 wide receiver in your tight end spot in, in Travis Kelsey's career uh he he basically missed his his rookie season uh in 2013 had one game since that point in 2014 he has only missed one game in 16 seven seasons. 16 16 15 16 16 and a full season so far the positional advantage when you have him going up against your opponent every single week is 
And while while yeah. it's still a onesie, it's, it's a onesie position, meaning you don't need more of them. So that the, that's why running backs, wide receivers, that's why we we draft them higher. But the difference here, you know, quarterbacks are a onesie position, but you can replace them so easily. Right. You pick up Jalen Hurts off the waiver, and you have an awesome. You you draft someone in the tenth, eleventh, twelfth round that are that are great. You can't replace tight end. You can't. The tight ends suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think they're because of the fact he doesn't miss games, and is such an advantage over the other players at the position. It, there's a strong argument that he belongs in the top five. That's fine by me. It's just an interesting discussion to be having. Noah Fant. Yes, a Fant. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't believe that wasn't in the pun day. I knew, was I knew when we made enough of a big deal about it, he was going to do something like this. Sorry. Yeah. I thought it, I thought you should just say, Noah, I was wrong here. Take the L. 11 targets. Woo. <clears throat> Mr. Irresponsible was responsible with his yeah. target share. Logan Thomas, 15 targets, 13 for 101. Um, it's crazy. That's incredible. 13 catches. It was J.D. McKissick and Logan Thomas on every play. Yeah, until the end. Then McLaurin finally got in on it. Mark Andrews, Hunter Henry, Tyler Higby. Yeah. Four, four for 67 and Andy's one. Andy's start of the week. Oh, that was great to see. Great to see. Um, oh, we're getting closer to Grandma's segment. This is good. <laughs> Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All right. We mentioned that this player might struggle. Elite pass rushes seem to be a big problem for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, 18 for 67, one touchdown, 121 yards passing. I doubt you won with him in your lineup this week. No, he was very limited and limited. I mean, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. This this was a huge letdown game from a Seahawks offense. Goodness gracious! That got you far. You it, it, they helped get you to the semifinals, and hopefully, you withstood a victory. We have him down right now in our system as the QB twenty seven. There's still two more quarterbacks that have to play. Oh, had, my goodness. He had 121 total passing yards. One touchdown, one interception. Yucky. Yucky, yuck, doo-doo. <laughs> oh, that's painful, man. Oh. Uh, uh. Yeah. It's really, really difficult right now. Russ has not been uh, cooking. No. He, he burned something. He uh, he has been bad, and what what's so stupid is that right now – he is the quarterback five on the season. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 those things just aren't fair. Uh, Still 11 over the last five weeks. Oh, uh, that's fun. But this was atrocious. And then Jared Goff was just... Goffle? Yes. I mean, they lost. They lost to the Jets. <laughs> you want that on your resume? They had a 17 and a half point line. They were favored by 17 and a half. I don't remember the last I time. I took them to cover <laughs> I mean, goodness did you see uh uh jonathan blevins had a 12 team parlay yes yeah, and yeah. A, he had 11 of 12 right <laughs> the last one was the rams to just win. winning just, just, just winning to win which is the most easy and obvious thing of all time i would have cashed and my lost. check and you know what adam gase you never cease to impress me when i think you can't do anything stupider <laughs> you go and totally oh, he, redeem yourself. He doesn't care. He's not going to be there next year. Oh, man. I mean, this is the... Did you see that back page that they showed on, on the broadcast last night for in New York? The, it, was it Lawrence Welp? It's the Lawrence Welp. <laughs> Lawrence, question mark, Welp. It is and very it, funny. He, he goes to the Jaguars as of now. The strength of schedule tiebreaker, the Jaguars have the easier strength of schedule. So if they both finish with man. one win, which mm, seems probable... Then the Jacksonville Jaguars get the number one pick because the Jets beat the Los the Angeles whole, Rams. The whole th the system of like your team is better off if you lose. Like it, it stinks. It's, well, it's but you tough to swallow. I, I did you guys listen to uh, what's Travis Kelsey's brother, Jason Kelsey, or uh, am I getting the name right? Yeah, Jason Kelsey, Jason, from the, right from the Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles. Yeah. Did you hear him talking about 
about picks and winning and no oh i did yes it was a it, great it, quote it was and it, he, he was making the point that you know in football because of how many players are on the team one draft pick generally doesn't necessarily define everything generally. now obviously with a quarterback yes. it can but it can also go the other direction right i mean whether it's you can you can make the wrong pick you could also have trevor lawrence say he doesn't want to play for jacksonville or new york as well sure um but i'm just saying that that you get it you get a uh, a better pick you get a, a better shot at taking the player that you actually want by, by losing, losing. Yeah. it's just it's it, it's the way it works. Uh, it's the way it works. But this is why we uh, let me let me translate this to fantasy football for a second. We um we do something in our league to prevent the clarity of knowing that finishing last gives you the number one pick, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this, the NBA does this, and we have the lottery for the bottom four teams for the first round. Now we we go reverse order of standings beyond that in the draft, but for the first round, if you're in the bottom four teams. Your name's getting picked out of a hat for who gets that first pick. So that way there isn't some incentive to be dead last. So that way you can pull the ultimate um, Adam Gaze move and just... I mean, it's just like, like walk down the path because Trevor Lawrence is the most hyped quarterback by the media since, since Andrew, Andrew Luck. Luck. Yeah. Andrew Luck. Number two. That's the pick they're going to have. <laughs> Andrew Luck, that... Graphic was incredible. I did not know that we had that. Number two. Oh, fabulous on uh, YouTube. Uh, but Andrew Luck, he was hyped. He was a hit. I mean, he suffered unfortunate injuries and then retired because of them. But Andrew Luck was on his way to being a franchise quarterback. Oh, absolutely. If you're a Jets fan and you've won this game, you watch Trevor Lawrence drafted to the Jaguars go have a great career because Adam Gase won a game and who will no longer be a part of your franchise next year. That that's all I'm Number saying. Number two. Is, is it that's gonna feel really bad. Really bad. Yeah. It is. And we'll see not, what happens. Not that they can't get a, a like there's other quarterbacks in the draft that you could take at number two. Josh Fields. Yeah. Justin. Uh, Justin Fields. Yeah. Yeah. Or his brother Josh. <laughs> Which would be a worse pick. Is he a draft eligible? Be worse pick. He's eight years old. <laughs> That's where they say the name wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. We won't linger on the stinkers too long, but Todd Gurley is the player that I was going to bring up because yeah, Todd okay. Gurley had one carry for negative one yards. I mean. He did have a, a pretty insane one-handed catch. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um Wait, I, so did he finish with negative points or not? No. Oh, okay. he, I saw that he did. Jason, you How, ruined it. Did he fumble? If, if, if He had two receptions for 15 yards. Oh, he had two points, Jason. Your grandmother Something finishes must last. Something must have changed. Oh, my grandmother didn't didn't beat Todd Gurley. At one point. I don't know the order of She operations. must have been leading at one point. Yeah, yeah. He, he may have had negative points at, at a point. Oh. But he, it sucks, Probably man. shouldn't have played him. It it sucks that Todd Gurley is. Toast. She beat him on He's, the ground. She yes, beat him in the running yes. game. It's it sucks that Gurley yeah, is true. toast, but Todd Gurley is toast. Yeah. It's oh sad. yeah. Yeah. It it is. And um, what a weird year too, right? Where he just he gave you some value, and yet, um, it's over. Kenyon Drake, Mike Davis, Chris Carson, Cam Akers. Oh, Cam. Cam Akers. Kareem Hunt. Oh, Stinkers this week. Man. Wayne Gallman last night. Nine for oh. 29, no touchdowns. Ew. Very Bruce of him. And uh, Deion Lewis was on the field a lot. Alfred Morris ran a lot better than, than Wayne Gallman did. His tank ran out. Like he's like, he gave it everything he had, but it's just he's depleted now. Brooks would yeah. like us to remind you this was the George Clooney version of Bruce Wayne. Mm, that is an excellent, excellent point, Brooks. That was a rough movie. Was George Clooney the worst? <laughs> I don't know that he was. Was he the worst? He's I think worse Val than Kilmer. Val Kilmer. No. no, I think Val Kilmer was my least favorite. And I love Val Kilmer. And I love George Do Clooney. Do you? <laughs> I, oh, Val Kilmer's fantastic. Yeah, Val Kilmer's great. I, yeah, George Clooney. I mean, th these are all wonderful George Clooney was, was real bad. That, was, that movie, it was the movie combined with Clooney. Yes, the because movie Mr. was. Because Mr. Freeze and oh, 
Freaking I miss one liners. Poison liner. Ivy. I, I, miss, <laughs> I miss awful, awful one liners in movies. Like they're too campy now. That has to be in only a comedy movie. Like this wasn't a comedy movie. This was a serious, you know, action film, and then it's like just Well, it's because it's Arnold. Arnold yeah. is the king of, of one liners of yeah. terrible one liners in action movies. Yeah. All right. Um He had to split. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh Chris Carson, I 15 for 63 looked good, just didn't go his way, I would say. Stall at RB2 next week. Yeah, it turned into a uh, Carlos Hyde 50-yard touchdown. Devontae Adams, 10 targets, 7 for 42. This one hurt. Bad timing, Devontae. Yeah, a, a really, really bad timing for my listener league playoff team where I had to go all in on the Packers. It looked okay for the first half where they scored 21 points and then there was nothing. That game, it was just pressing. It was like the Tampa game. For Green Bay, where they came out on fire, and then all of a sudden they just—it was over. It's like yeah. they pressed. It was crazy. It was twenty-one to three in the blink of an eye. They pulled the plug, and then it was twenty-one to three for about thirty minutes. Right. Brooks George Clooney was the worst, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> uh, Keenan Allen. The 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 best part of this Keenan Allen here. Nothing about the performance. We've we've hashed that out, but there was a note here. Our, our our editor in chief Kyle the Gogan is like the the world's biggest Keenan Allen fan. So his note here is: bury me, leave my grave unmarked, build a Denny's on top of my plot. I am dead. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, and he's not. You can't trust him next week. Oh, can you? No. I need to know. No, Mike, you can't. I I think we're gonna be talking about like. Uh, Tyron Johnson this week. That's what our conversations oh, are going to be. Oh, goodness gracious. I am not looking forward to that. Amari Cooper, I wondered for a while in this game whether he was even playing. Yeah, it was weird. Two for ten. Horrible game. Just absolutely atrocious. Something weird happened. If your name was Cooper, you had a bad game. Cooper Cup, five targets, five for 39. Okay, Tyler Lockett has been the wide receiver 47 or worse in eight of 11 games. Yeah, he's... Uh... <laughs> I think he's still like probably a top ten. He's you want to know who he reminds me of? Tyler Lockett, Russell oh. Wilson, his quarterback who got off to such a strong hot Not start. Not Lockett, yeah. and these guys have these guys have really stunk over the last. This is a this is a stretch though for Tyler Lockett right now. That is um, shocking. The last eight games, really, man. He really just had a nice start. That was it. He had yeah. three good games, and then after that, it was the Hollywood Brown show. Well, I thought you were going to – I mean, Hollywood Brown's actually been good. Hollywood well, Brown was – the last three weeks. Four. They, yeah, they – He was six for 98 yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a weird world. Yep. Football. Tyler Lockett or, or Hollywood next week, Jason? <laughs> 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 um <laughs> <laughs> hmm. We gotta we'll, get. The, uh, we'll look at the matchups yeah. later. In I the guess week. I'll, I'll give it three choices: Lockett, Hollywood. You could start your grandmother. <laughs> I'm Jeez. gonna. I'm gonna go with one of the wide receivers for okay. sure. Okay. All right. Uh, T. Y. Hilton four for seventy one. It was disappointing because it was T. Y. Houston. Yeah, Houston. It, it, we're putting that in the stinkers. Should not, he I don't think it's a stinker. stinker. Brooks, no. you're just trying to. It's in the honorable. Just that's true. It is an honorable. Honorable stinkers. A dishonorable stinker. Yeah. All right. It's surprising when T.Y. Well, doesn't go off against Houston. It, it, yeah. I, I will say this. I think the reason that he's here is not because of his finish, but because if you had him, if which a lot of people did, the entire game he had nothing. It was it, Yeah, he was it, off the field a lot. It was at the very end of the game where his bomb almost touchdown play made his fantasy day okay. Yep. And so you felt – the bust. You felt the horrific letdown. Man, I wish you ran in for that touchdown. Oh, I mean, that would have been incredible. All right. There were some disappointing tight ends. TJ Hawkinson, Rob Gronkowski, Dallas Goddard, Jared Cook. Mm -hmm. All four of them were bad. Irv Smith didn't come through either. It was Tyler Conklin. Oh, that was what was so upsetting. Conk. And Irv Smith had the same corner oh, dropped touchdown against the Jason, Bears. Jason, I had forgotten about it. Yeah, I was like, catch the ball. You Jordan, had a Akins, touchdown. Jordan Akins last week, corner of the end zone, dropped a touchdown. Bears love giving up touchdowns to tight ends, which it was proven by Tyler Conklin scoring yeah. in this game. And then Irv Smith had a 
a dropped touchdown as well. Um, so disappointing tight ends. It, it's kind of part of life. I mean, that's really unfortunate. Cook was the biggest disappointment to me because yes. of the return of Drew Brees and the fact that that was a back and forth game and Drew Brees had to throw the ball a lot and yet Jared Cook um, yep. failed. Yep. Stinkers of, the, Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Uh, very excited as we close today's show uh, to announce our holiday giveaway video that's up on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Now, uh, are you on the microphone, Mr. Al, Al Borna? I am. Okay, we put this video together. It is a huge multi thousand dollars of sports memorabilia from Pristine Auction Giveaway. That went up on Saturday, right? Yes, sir. Have we chosen winners yet? We have not. So we have not. Oh. We're giving about half the items away to people who comment on the YouTube. So if you want to get in there. It's perfect, man. Like maybe maybe you took an L over the weekend, and I'm sorry. Go catch a W. Yeah. Go catch a signed jersey. So if you go check that out, we, we opened up uh, literally like 20 items. We're giving them all away. Autographed fantasy football stars, you know, uh, gear from – Tons oh, of great players. Alvin Kamara and company. Alvin Kamara. I remember a Calvin Ridley, a Keenan Allen. You had cleats. You had helmets. You had uh, James jerseys. Robinson helmet. Yeah. Oh, awesome stuff. So much stuff. So you can check that out on YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballer. Just a way of saying thank you. And uh, we want to say thanks to Pristine Auction for supporting that video and getting some free stuff out to the Foot Clan. Um, and if you want to check out Pristine Auction, you can do so at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS and get a $10 credit. All right, guys. I need it. I need the Deontay oh, Johnson. Oh, yeah. I need Deontay Johnson. 11.3. 11.3. Let's go. 11.3 for Deontay. 11 for Juju. And yeah. everyone's happy. And everyone's happy. All right, Everyone is happy. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.